Welcome to the Child Care Genius Podcast, the world's number one community for brilliant child care leaders. Each episode will feature interviews with the brightest minds in the child care industry to guide you into becoming a smarter business leader. Our hosts have opened 10 schools while raising five children. They are certified business coaches, best-selling authors, and have personally helped thousands of child care owners around the world achieve incredible growth. Let's welcome to the Child Care Genius Podcast, Brian and Carol Dupre. Welcome to episode three of the Child Care Genius Podcast. We're your hosts, Brian and Carol Dupre. And before we begin, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss a future episode. Now, a few days ago, we had an amazing masterclass in Child Care Genius Masterclass series. And it featured the guest we're going to have on our podcast today. If you're unable to watch it live, you can go right now to the uh, our website at childcaregenius.com and watch the replay of that masterclass. Our guest on the podcast today is Kim Palmeris. Kim is a former owner of Courthouse Academy in Virginia Beach. Kim will be discussing the importance of getting the, your financial house in order in your child care center. Now, I personally coached Kim for many years, helping her to go from broke to a child care millionaire. She recently sold the school for a huge sum to sit back, relax, and get ready to learn from an amazing child care leader. Let's get Kim on the line. Kim Palmeris, welcome to the Child Care Genius Podcast. How are you doing today? I am doing very well, thank you. How about yourselves? Awesome. Well, it's great to have you here today. Uh, our listeners know that we live in Maine, but where are you located? Virginia Beach, Virginia. What's the weather like in Virginia Beach uh, in the middle of June? June is not necessarily great. It's it, it, it's hot some days and then it rains and then it's cloudy. It's July and August are our mid for the year. Yeah, Carol and I used to li live in Virginia Beach. A lot of our listeners don't know this, but we were both in the U.S. Navy station there, and uh, we loved, lived there for a long time. And we were back there a couple years ago, and I remember coming by your school to visit you. So tell us a little bit about the school you used to own before you sold it, uh, Courthouse Academy. Tell us about your school. Yes, I opened it in 1992, uh, and it was just a preschool for two, three, and four-year-olds. Um, I always loved the Spanish language, so I included Spanish in the curriculum, um, and uh, the school expanded to include kindergarten and then infants and toddlers, and about that time, my daughter had been an English immersion teacher in Spain, and when she came back, she said, Mom, you love the Spanish language, why don't you do Spanish immersion? It was like, oh, light bulb moment. Um, so we started with one class as a Spanish, a kindergarten class, a Spanish immersion, and it became very popular. And so we just slowly added classes each year with Spanish till eventually the school became entirely Spanish immersion school and we added uh, an elementary school. So the school actually takes infants through fifth grade. Wow, how many kids did you have? Um, License? Three. Wow, I know it's well, a big school. 308, I think. Wow. wow. Huge, big school. And you started in 92. So quite a yeah, while. Started, You're in... Yeah, 92 with 10 two-year-olds, 10 four-year-olds, and one three-year-old. Wow. And you grew awesomely big, and you recently sold the business. And uh, how does it feel like to be a former owner of a child care center? Uh, it's pretty incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, I, but I, love, I was passionate and loved the journey, but you know, I was just ready for a different thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a long time in the business that, you know, 90 did yeah. actually longer than we did it. Um, and that, that's good, but you made a difference in the lives of many. I, I, like I said, I've been to the school, uh, when I was coaching you and it, you just ran it so well and did such a great job. And I loved it. Um, what would you say your biggest mistake you made in your childcare business prior to me starting to coach you in, uh, in, in full disclosure, I coached Kim for about three years. I was her personal coach and, um, so there was the pre-Brian life, and then there was a post-Brian life. <laughs> and uh, so what was your biggest mistake you, you'd say you made before oh, you I left? I love that question, my biggest mistake. There are far too many. There's so many. I can't just name one. <laughs> <laughs> of, 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 of 
bad decisions and bad moves and um, not all of them, you know, were necessarily, uh, they were circumstances, some of them, but um, I think, I mean, probably the, the very biggest was I went into it totally ignorant about the money, how to understand the money, how to plan, how to um, forecast, how to anything. Um, and on top of that, so the school started, I rented space in a church. And one day I was walking down the hallway and I looked at their bulletin board and it said, we're opening our, our own school next year. That's how I found out I had no place to be. So I had nine months to find land and build a building. Wow. Uh, and it rained five out of those nine months. Um, so that was out of my hands, but I went from paying 700, I believe $700 a month in rent to a $25,000 a month mortgage. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and not having any concept of the money, I was in deep doo-doo right from the get-go. I mean, I, I, I didn't understand what I had, what I, what I was doing. So um, that would probably, you know, probably be um, um, you know, a, a big part of the, the, just not understanding the money. Then it was compounded by uh, I had a director who was not paying the bills off fully every month, which I didn't know. And she was embezzling and I mm. fired her. And then I found out I had all these overdue bills. Um, and I called everyone and said, look, I will make good. I, and I did. But in the interim, to still not understanding the money and not understanding that I needed to raise tuition significantly, I ended up started relying on the car the credit cards um, and got myself in deep trouble there. So the money, the, you know, not understanding the money was probably my biggest mistake. And I didn't know how to find out how to understand the money. Yeah, that is a... <laughs> I see it a lot, Kim, and you're not alone. And I love and I appreciate you being candid with us and our audience um, because there's a lot of people listening right now that are in the exact same boat and they're drowning and they don't know what to do. And um, I can I can remember on several occasions back then we had a teacher and parent store and I can remember being there and I had a big school at the time digging in the bottom of my purse for change to try and buy construction paper. I and mean, that's a bad yeah um, you know and so my heart goes out to these people who are struggling like that. for sure so kim financially before you met brian and started coaching with him compared to where you are now what's the difference <laughs> oh my gosh um i had a, at that time i had an annual revenue of over a million dollars and i was going bankrupt it, none of it made it to the bottom line. It was revenue, but it was, um, I was truly going bankrupt and didn't know what to do. Um, and on top of it, since I was relying on credit cards, I had $86,000 in credit card debt. Um, and I had a tiger by the tail because I had, my home was on the line. Everything I owned or everything I owned was tied into the school. So if I lost the school, which it looked like I was going to, I would have, I would have basically been on the streets. So I watched everything. So um, it was, it um, was bad, it was like really bad. Um, where I am now, um, my husband is retired. Uh, I am retired. I sold, uh, I left the school uh, with, seven figures, um, just ordered uh, or have a Airstream trailer on order, have a uh, Jeep Grand Wagoneer on order, uh, a new hot tub on order, <laughs> um, supply chain issues, <laughs> but they're coming. <laughs> um, and, 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 and I mean, financially, I don't have to worry anymore. Well, you worked hard, Kim. You deserve it. And I'm so glad I was a small part of helping you, but you were a workhorse. You know, you did the work. I just helped lay out a plan. And that's the thing with coaching is coach doesn't have the answers. A coach gives a, helps you to find your own solutions to the problem. You knew what you needed to do. 
you just didn't have the the wherewithal to do it or you just needed somebody to kind of guide you along and that's where we came along and just and just guided you along in that process but you were so disciplined i remember looking at your spreadsheets uh and you knew to the penny where every penny was coming in every penny was coming out and I, that wasn't the same um in the early years you just didn't know until until you were in, you know when you get to the bottom of the hole and you realize maybe i better start digging here <laughs> and um, we put a game plan together. We built a ladder to get you out of the hole. And boy, you were so good. I remember, remember getting emails and texts from you saying, I paid off this credit card. Then I paid off this credit card. You were disciplined about paying one off at a time with the highest interest rates, all the stuff that we teach, you know, Dave Ramsey, Dave Ramsey stuff that I learned from. But, you know, you had a, a great master plan that you had put together and you followed it to a T. And I remember when you became debt free and, and paid the last thing off and how exciting it was. And it was a, literally, I think, a two year period. You went from so far deep to totally debt free uh, just from changes things. And you actually had to spend some money to make some money. And that's a hard thing when you're in the bottom of the hole to spend some money for coaching or spend some money for marketing. It's hard for you to do that, but you were disciplined about returning in, in episode one of the child care genius podcast. We met with Nick William and we talked about that very same thing is in marketing. Sometimes you have to spend money to make money. And for every dollar you spend, you know, you're going to get two or three dollars in return. And it's hard when you're broke to find that dollar. But, you know, that two or three dollars will come. And I appreciate yeah, the fact when you're looking when you're looking at that large outlay every month, it's, it's terrifying. But and you, have, and you have to be careful about which ones you choose to do. They need to bring you a return. Um, but, you know, once once you identify the like marketing as, as a must. And you and you figure it out. It it it's it's I don't know. It's, it lifts a burden off, and when you see it paying off, you're like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> you you did wonderful, and um, I'm just so proud of you. And the only sad part about it is you're not in business anymore. I can't coach you anymore. So that's the biggest sad part about that. Um, and I love the fact that, you know, Chris Murray and the Child Care Success Academy got you started, but I'm so glad she had me coach you because we were able to get you out of that. And I'm so glad we were put together. And um, it, it's been a blessing getting to know you and your husband. And I knew today that you'd be able to take and bless somebody else. Um, and I know you probably have some tips for our listeners. So do you have any tips that you can implement, somebody can implement right away to avoid some of the mistakes you made early on and help to them so, become financially successful? I, I would say um, know, know your numbers, know your revenue and know where every penny is going. And so, and, and the way I suggest you do it is a budget. You, you figure out your expenses in those various categories over several months. You take an average and you plug those in for each category going forward so that you have an idea of how much money is going to be spent. And you, doing that, you visualize, you, you can see some places where you're probably spending too much or where you're not spending enough and you, you can address that. Um, and then with revenue, if it's clearly, you know, you're coming up short at the end of the month and you have pared down your expenses as much as you can, then you're not charging enough. Um, and you know what you need to do to fix that. Uh, if you don't know your numbers, and, and I know this, and I'm not faulting anybody because it's exactly what I did. I ran my business by the bank account balance. Um, I knew nothing about where the money, how much was coming in, really, how much was going out, how it was going out. It was just if there was somebody, some money in the bank, I guess we can pay that. Um, and I know that's so prevalent. That's how most people do it. And that's when you, you don't know. If you don't know the big picture and you're going to be in trouble at some point or other. Um, the other big thing I found out by doing that is... I was always in such emotional and stress turmoil because these numbers were floating around in my head. Oh my God, payroll is coming. Do I have enough and the rent? And it's all floating around and just creating a life of high anxiety when it's all in hard copy and you can see it in black and white. It takes that, or, you know, that, all that stuff spinning around in your head out of your head and gives you some peace. 
because you can look at it, and even if it doesn't look good, you know exactly what you need to do to fix it. That's that's probably um, my you know my biggest suggestion, um, and I would I also use it. Um, Brian helped you helped me with this one. Um, I was trying to decide. I knew I needed marketing, and guys, you need marketing. You need marketing, um, and I that was one of the big tough points I had. And I had tried a couple of marketing companies, and they did a terrible job, and I fired both of them, and then. Um, I landed on one that I felt would do a good job, but then they quoted me $5,000 a month and I just about, you know, <laughs> soiled my pants. <laughs> um, uh, but I kept saying to myself, you, I, you can't afford this, but you have to do this. But this is the, the, all that's going around in my head. You have to do this. No, you can't do this. And I called Brian and I said, I don't know what to do. I have to do this, but I can't do this. And he said, um, or he said, um, do you think they can get you four children a month? And I said, yeah, based on what they plan on doing, I think that sounds like a, you know, a fairly conservative number. And so what I did was I created a spreadsheet over the course of the 12 months, and I added an average of four children a month. Sometimes I did less, sometimes, and I didn't even add any for the first couple months because I thought, you know, there's got to be time to ramp up. And and as I went on and it added four children a month, I also realized I was going to have some greater expenses. So I put in some expenses into the spreadsheet, like added teachers. And when I got to the end, over the course of a year, I realized if I didn't spend that $5,000 a month, I was throwing $65,000 a year away. I would be coming out $65,000 ahead if I made the decision to go with the marketing. And it, it proved to be true. So it took a lot of the um, anxiety out of the decision because at the end it was like, oh my, this is a no brainer. <laughs> you know, I'll be stupid not to. So the, those are the things that I suggest. And, you know, one thing, I want to go back to one thing you said about your business checking account. And so many people who are listening here, they're like, wait a minute, if it's in my checking account, that's money I could use to pay bills with. A lot of people don't realize your business checking account is 100% different, the total opposite of your personal checking account. Your personal checking account is when you have money in there, yeah, you could write a check in there. But your business checking account, you have what we call unpaid liabilities. Like when you pay your payroll, you have payroll taxes, which are an unpaid liability that will come out of your account a week after your payroll. That's, a, that's an unfunded liability. And you have bills that you've obligated for that will be coming by the end of the month. You haven't figured that out yet. So you have to think differently about your business checking account than you do your personal checking account. And then if you don't have, if you have money in there, it doesn't necessarily mean that your money, the IRS has some of that money, your vendors have some of that money, your future payroll costs, which you've already expended has some of that money. So you have to think differently and we can help you. Um, do that. We're, we're actually, um, we had a master class a couple of days ago. Um, I don't know if you, you, uh, I, I'm reading Carol's question here. She's going to ask about that. So forgive me. We don't have to do it perfectly. We're, we're not child care geniuses. They're the geniuses here listening. Here. But anyway, um, the master class we did a couple of days ago, we talked a little bit about the importance of getting your financial stuff in order. And uh, should, should listeners go back and, and watch the replay if they didn't see it live? Oh my gosh, absolutely, absolutely. A wealth of information, great people sharing great information. Um, don't miss it, go take the opportunity to, to educate yourself. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on to that masterclass. It was, it was awesome. Um, I'll let you read the mindset question though. How's that? Not that I'm letting you do anything. You know, you're your own woman, you're my boss. Would you be so kind as to read the mindset question for Ms. Palmeras? Kim, what is your favorite mindset book? My favorite book, mindset book is The Slight Edge. I love that book. It's eminently uh, readable and doable. Um, I find, well, I think there are many wonderful mindset books. I found this one to be the easiest to read and understand and accomplish. Sometimes mindset books for me, and this is, and actually, in talking with people, I find that other people sometimes feel this way too. They feel overwhelmed sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they may feel like I have I should be doing all these things and I should be doing them all right now, and I'm a failure, which is counterproductive. <laughs> um, 
um, where the side edge just takes you through and, and you're able to do the things that it says and, and, and feel accomplished. My favorite too. Yeah. Create great changes in, in your life. So each week we read a question from someone who needs mentoring. And this week's question comes from Robert from Miami. And we have saved the question for you. And Robert writes, Dear Brian and Carol, I'm new to the childcare business. Can you give me some tips on how to avoid financial mistakes early on in my business? Well, I think we did address quite a few things financially um, as far as you know, knowing your numbers, knowing every penny of what you're spending and where it's going. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people choose to have accountants do all of their stuff for them, and that's a personal choice. I personally preferred, once I realized that it was key to me operating my business for me to know my numbers well, I opted to get QuickBooks, which is not the only software out there, but I chose QuickBooks. Um, because I keep my eyes on it every penny every day. And I could put it in instead of waiting for a profit and loss statement at the end of the month or at the end of the quarter or when it no longer does you any good, um, I could produce a profit and loss whenever I needed to. And that's what, those were the numbers I used to prepare my budget and forecast. Um, so, uh, you know, I do recommend that, that, you, that you get to know your numbers through, through some kind of program like that. Awesome. Good tips. And uh, I've really enjoyed having you on the podcast today, Kim. And like I guess that I miss you, miss coaching you, but I'm so proud of you. And I guess that's the culmination of a couple years of hard work. Um, we made you some good money, but you did all the work and you deserve every penny of it. And uh, come up and visit us, here, come visit us up here in Maine sometime. Yeah. We'd love to have you on the lake. And Paul and I can go fishing. You girls can go do whatever girls do, shopping and having fun. What's that? I like to fish. All right. Well, if we take Carol, does it? But uh, Carol can lay in the sun while you while we're all fishing, I guess. Or maybe Paul and Carol can lay in the sun while you and I are fishing. I don't know. We'll 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 figure that out. Uh, but thank you for coming on. I want to thank you for all the things that you have done for me in my life. You as a coach gave me so many tips and sent me, put me on the path for so many good things um, that I was able to implement in, in my business and were pivotal to, to the changes that took place. Thank you, Kim. Very humbled by that. So Kim Palmaris, for signing off. You have a good rest of your day and say hi to your husband, Paul, for us. Will do. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. I just love Kim Palmaris. She is great, boy. It's so great because I knew her when she was a train wreck. Sorry, Kim, <laughs> but you were. And your finances were in a mess. You're in a bad place. And um, I'm just so excited that I was help, able to help her transcend her business. Um, but she did the work. I tell you, she was a workhorse and uh, just love her. Um, and it's, she's the perfect client to coach. Because every time I said to do something or suggested to do something, she did it and she, she got the results and it shows now for sure. So how would you like as a listener to be coached by Carol and I? We're looking for 12 couples that want to hang out with us in the Caribbean next year on a tax deductible workation. Child Care Genius workations are going on. We're going on our first trip Um this month, in next actually, it's in a little over a week, we're going to St. Lucia with five couples, mm -hmm. and we're going to spend the week with them. So we're going to have two different trips, and we're going to have a small setting. It's going to be exciting. And uh, are you looking forward to it? I am. It's going to be great because you get to have individual attention. Each trip is only going to have a max of six couples with us. So we're going to have an intimate setting. We're going to get to have private dinners. We're going to have private lunches. We're going to do individualized coaching. We're going to give you a game plan for success. And each one's going to have a different theme. Uh, so we're excited about that. Now, if you visit childcaregenius.com forward slash workation, W-O-R-K-A-T-I-O-N, for more information, space is limited to six couples per trip. We're going to Jamaica in January, and we're going to go to Barbados 
in March. So go ahead and look for more information right now on our website, and we would love to have you. Center owners, large and small, and also future center owners are welcome. The one stipulation is uh, we're going to Sandals, which is a couples only resort. So that's the only stipulation. There has to be a couple working there. Uh, we prefer couples that are building the business together, but it's not necessarily required. Only one can show up at the meetings that we do. Um, but we would love to have couples that are bu building the business together because that's where we specialize in helping you yeah. grow. And also it can be a partnership. Partnership, it, sure. Just, yeah, it that's has no to problem be at all. two people. Um, yeah. Yeah, the only problem with a partnership is you got to share a room. Right. So well, <laughs> you have to like them a lot. <laughs> so you got to like them a lot. Yeah, yeah. So uh, with that, the one disadvantage, um, hopefully down the road, we'll have future options where we could bring singles in and singles yep. build the business alone. But for right now, these two different trips are going to be uh, couples. And like I said, we prefer couples building a business together, but it's not a requirement. But you right. do both need to go on the trip together right? because it is couples only. And this concludes episode three of the Child Care Genius podcast. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss a future episode. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Child Care Genius podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please do us a favor and hit the subscribe button so you won't miss a future episode. Don't forget to visit our website at childcaregenius.com to see a list of services we offer to help your childcare business grow. Until next time, thank you for being a part of the Childcare Genius community.